seven sneaky behaviors you should never tolerate in a relationship with examples of what they look like. From romantic partners to friends and family members, it's often the subtle sneaky behaviors that chip away at trust, your confidence and emotional security. Often, people use these tactics to maintain control, to avoid accountability or protect a very fragile ego. They could do it unconsciously, instinctively, as a bad learned strategy that works for them. Or worse, some people maliciously and deliberately deploy these tactics. Either way, the quality of your life and relationships will deteriorate over time and you'll experience lasting negative effects. So, let's check them out. Pay attention so you can recognize them when you're subjected to them and protect yourself. Number one, backhanded compliments. These are the compliments that carry a hidden insult or criticism designed to put you down while sounding sweet and nice. They're like a little dig wrapped in a smile. The fortune cookie that tastes rancid. For example, Someone might say something like, you look amazing, especially considering your size. Or, it's great that you don't care what people think about your outfit. <laughs> people who use backhanded compliments may feel insecure themselves or jealous of you and want to create a dynamic where they feel better than you or above you but without risking direct confrontation they do this to subtly undermine your confidence and to make you question yourself when you consistently hear these types of digs you may feel like you never quite measure up you're a little disoriented number two triangulation that is when someone brings a third party person or a group of people into your relationship dynamic to create pressure or make you feel isolated. It's often a way to manipulate you into thinking you're wrong or outnumbered or to make you do something you otherwise will not, a sort of a peer pressure. For example, in an intimate relationship, one partner might frequently compare their current partner to their ex, saying things like, my ex always supported me in this way, or my ex never made a big deal about these things. This usually makes the current partner feel they're constantly falling short and that the ex still has some influence in the relationship. Or it could cause them to feel and act defensively. Or a friend may say, I'm not the only one who's noticing this about you. So-and-so has not noticed and asked me about it too. So this is also triangulation and makes you feel that multiple people share the same perspective, possibly causing you to feel self-doubt and guilt. In a family dynamic, parents could use triangulation to pin siblings against each other. Your brother never gave us this much trouble. So you get the idea. Triangulation makes the person doing it feel validated by having someone on their side and may also use it up to dodge direct conflict or accountability by implying that others support their viewpoint, making you feel outnumbered or unsupported, hoping that you will, they hope that you will comply or give up, give in, do whatever they want you to do. Triangulation makes you doubt your own perspective and uh, feels like people are ganging up on you. It's especially toxic because it manipulates you into questioning your feelings, opinions, your character, your choices. That's what happens. Number three, 
passive aggressive behavior. This is where someone expresses their frustration or resentment indirectly, often through sarcasm, or they're suddenly very forgetful about important things or little subtle jabs. They're the backhanded compliment bunch. For example, picture this. You ask your partner to help with something and they reply, Oh, sure, I'll do it since I guess no one else around here knows how. Or they keep accidentally being late for things they know are important to you. Or they always forget your anniversary or birthday even if you remind them two weeks before excusing themselves with you know i'm bad at remembering these kinds of things okay but you do have a calendar on your phone and you could put a reminder there for yourself if you really wanted to remember right sometimes it comes out as criticism followed by i'm just kidding My ex used to do this all the time. We'd be sitting at the dinner table with friends and someone will say, Oh, so how long have you been a vegetarian? My ex would respond, Nah, she eats meat on vacation. He, 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 he. And when I say, What are you talking about? He'll say, Just kidding. Another way passive aggressive behavior shows up is instead of outright ignoring you, Someone gives totally minimal responses with this particular tone you know too well, like short one-word answers or heavy sighs without explaining why. So when you ask if something is wrong, the person will respond with, I'm fine, nothing's wrong, don't worry about it. Again, it's the tone, not just what is said. Passive-aggressive behavior allows the person to express dissatisfaction or resentment indirectly without the vulnerability of of addressing it directly. It's a way to punish or get back at you without taking on the emotional risk of a confrontation. This type of behavior creates confusion and tension. You're left wondering if you did something wrong but they never directly address the issue, which makes it impossible to fix, even if you want to. It makes you feel unfairly criticized, but you don't even know why or for what reason at all. Number four, blame shifting. Blame shifting is a classic tactic where the person dodges responsibility by turning the blame back onto you, even if it has nothing to do with you. Imagine you call them out for being late and they snap back with, well, maybe I wouldn't be late if you didn't ask me to do all those things before I came. Suddenly, they're not the problem, you are. If someone is consistently unreliable and forgetful instead of owning up to it, they might say, I wouldn't be so scattered if you weren't always on my case about everything. Blame shifting allows someone to dodge responsibility by turning the focus back on you. It's a common tactic used to avoid accountability and it makes you feel defensive or guilty for something that isn't your fault. It makes you feel responsible for their actions. People often shift blame because they can't handle criticism or the idea that they are at fault. This can be a form of self-protection, as admitting mistakes may feel threatening to their self-image or sense of control. Number five, fake apologies. They are flat. (laughs) Fake apologies are insincere attempts at making things right, but they're really just about brushing things under the rug. These apologies usually don't include any accountability. The person gets to seem like they're making amends, but they aren't truly acknowledging any wrongdoing or 
accepting any responsibility for anything. For example, they'll say something like, I'm sorry you feel this way, followed by some justification or a version of blame shifting. This is often done to pacify the other person quickly without engaging in any meaningful way. It can be a tactic to maintain the status quo while avoiding the discomfort of self-reflection or change. Fake apologies leave you feeling unresolved because they don't acknowledge the other person's role or the issue at hand. You might feel dismissed, even patronized. Two more sneaky behaviors to go. I'm curious, do these things resonate with you so far? Let me know in the comments. Give me a like and subscribe to help me spread relationship wisdom to the world. Number six, moving the goalpost. Moving the goalpost is when your partner, friend, parent, boss keeps changing expectations so you feel like you're never quite enough or never meeting their standards or expectations. So, for example, you plan a romantic night out and they say, that's nice, but it'd be better if you did something more spontaneous next time. So next time you plan a spontaneous date, only for them to comment, spontaneous is great, but I wish it had been something fancier. <laughs> or you do what they ask and they respond with, well, that's not really what I wanted. I'd like you to add X, Y, Z. So you go ahead and do it. And they say, yes, but. It would have been better if you also included and it keeps going. So you never quite get there. It's never enough over time. This keeps you off balance and feeling like you're constantly falling short. Even when you're putting in effort, it can lead to exhaustion and low self-esteem. But the most annoying and corrosive goalpost moving is known by the name of future faking, often used by narcissists to manipulate their victims. When I get a new job, I'll take you to Hawaii to celebrate. They get the job, but the Hawaii vacation doesn't happen. Instead, they say something like, I'm still learning and uncomfortable in my new position. When I get settled, I'll have more time and then I can take the time to go on vacation. But this never happens either and so on. <laughs> Number seven, projection. That is a defense mechanism where someone attributes their own unacceptable feelings or behaviors onto someone else, essentially distancing themselves from their own flaws by projecting them onto others. By projecting onto others, they avoid facing their own issues or traits, which can be painful or challenging to acknowledge. It also uh, diverts attention from their own actions or behaviors, making them feel safe from criticism. For example, if your partner is being secretive, they accuse you of hiding things or being dishonest. Or if they're controlling, they'll call you controlling out of the blue. Projection causes a lot of confusion and frustration because it feels like you're being accused of things that just aren't true. It's disorienting and can make you doubt your own actions. It puts you on the defensive. You get into these arguments where you say things like, Oh my God, I wish I had a camera to record you when you did this or when you said this. Obviously, there are more behaviors we could talk about. In this video, I talk about five super toxic behaviors, not sneaky at all, 
that you should never tolerate. Never. Check it out. I'll put it in the description down below. Recognizing bad behaviors is key to protecting yourself and setting healthy boundaries. If you see any of these signs, don't ignore them. Open, honest communication is a must in any relationship and everyone deserves respect and accountability. Find a good time to have a discussion with your partner or friend or boss or parent, whoever is doing these things, and see if you will get a satisfactory resolution. Then watch to see in, for their part, will they make an attempt to correct the behavior if they don't or things get worse, you may have to find a way to break it off, if it's possible to break it off. You deserve better. Did you like this video? Hit the thumbs up to let me know. Remember to subscribe for more relationship insights from me. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.